Welcome back to the third installment of the Getting Started series for Slope 3D. This tutorial will cover the basics of solving and interpreting an analysis in Slope 3D. We will cover meshing for a 3D stability analysis, how to contour both mesh and column data, graphing in 3D, exploring sliding mass data, and finally, visualizing the search extents and modes of failure for our 3D stability analysis. Before jumping into the demo, I should note that meshing is a key concept that needs to be covered for the effective use of slope 3D. Two types of meshes are required for a 3D limit equilibrium analysis, a column mesh and a conventional mesh, like what we use in a finite element analysis. In 2D, the default number of columns is prescribed on the Convergence tab in Slope W. Additional columns are inserted at solve time based on a variety of rules. Also, unbeknownst to most users, a finite element mesh is automatically generated behind the scenes. This mesh is required for two reasons. One, to contour parameters like material properties over the domain, and two, to facilitate slope W integration with finite element products like seep W. However, there is one key difference. The meshes must be generated before solving. There are mesh settings for the finite element mesh and the column mesh. The column mesh is generated upfront to optimize solve times. As we will see in the demo, two different types of geometry can be meshed. Let's now review the workflow in GeoStudio. In this file, we have one 2D geometry and one 3D geometry. I'm clicked on the first analysis, labeled No Anisotropy 3D, and in this simple problem, we've imported the 2D geometry, extruded it, and then continue to define our key slope stability parameters. For this problem, we are using the entry exit search option, and the analysis type is set to Morgan Stern and Price. The pore pressures are being defined using a piezometric surface. Now that I have this all set up, I could go and immediately try and solve. However, I would receive a warning that a mesh has not been generated. As mentioned in the PowerPoint, the first step of solving a 3D limit equilibrium analysis in GeoStudio is to generate a mesh. The first thing to note is we have a geometry to mesh at the top of this dialog box. Lower down, there's a slope 3D specific setting. Focusing first on the geometry, there are two op options, parametric geometry or geological model volumes. In this file, I have created the geometry directly in GeoStudio and therefore need to mesh the parametric geometry. In the next file we'll look at, we'll review the workflow for geological model volumes. Down in the bottom is where we define the column spacing. These columns are used in the 3D limit equilibrium calculations in the same manner as the 2D columns are used in slope W. Once I hit OK, the mesh is generated as we see in the status bar, and then GeoStudio flips from the geometry view to the mesh view. In the mesh view, by default, we are viewing the finite element mesh. Over on the right hand side, I can change via a drop down between shaded with edges, shaded, and wireframe. The wireframe gives us a hollow view of the 3D mesh draped on the external bounds of the domain. Also on the right hand side is an icon to paint the column grid and the ground surface. Ground surface painting, just like in 2D, reveals the topmost portion of the domain. The view grid column shows us the discretization for the columns in three-dimensional space. Now that the mesh has been generated, 
I can solve the analysis. Now I have switched over to a file that has imported a leapfrog geological model. As noted in the video on geometry, to create this analysis I simply went to the import button, selected geological model volumes, and then selected sequence central server. Once the project was located, I brought in the geological model volumes that comprise this geometry. As noted over in the geometry explorer, these GMVs appear under this portion of the dialog box. I can choose and inspect each one individually or select them all. Down on the property sheet, we can see which materials are defined or assigned to the volume and also change the opacity and visibility. Just like in parametric geometry, the first step before solving is to create a mesh. For this problem, I once again select the Generate Mesh button. The default setting for the geological model volume is based on the size of the domain and also the geological model volume meshes from LeapFrog. For this problem, I'll leave the defaults and then down below, notice that I've switched from the default size to a column size of 10 meters. Once again, I hit OK and down in the property bar, we see that the mesh is generating. Now I'm only interested in stability of this horseshoe-shaped earthen dam, and for simplicity, I've simply created an entry and exit line along this portion of the dam. Now that the problem has been meshed, select the Start button in the Solve Manager. Once solving is complete, we automatically flip over to Results view. The data that's available to us is basically the same as slope W. Down in the bottom left, we see the slip surfaces docking window, which allows us to select and review the factor of safety for different slip surfaces. We can always select the auto select critical to return to the slip surface with the lowest factor of safety. Under the contour option, we now see two tabs. The first one is to contour data on the domain. The second one is to contour data on the columns. At current, I am showing a contour of the effect of normal stress at the base of the column. Just like in slope W, I can change both the category and the parameter to create contours of any parameter that I wish. The legend button also works in 3D and is useful for quickly reviewing the range of values within the contour. Once I've set up the appropriate contours, the next thing that we often look at outside of the factor of safety is graphs. In 2D, one of the most critical graphs is the factor of safety versus lambda graph. In 3D, we now have two different factor of safety versus lambda graphs. The first one is factor of safety versus lambda in the x direction. The second is factor of safety in the z direction. Just like in 2D, it is important to review these graphs and make sure that the crossover between the force and moment factor of safety lines in both directions is unambiguous. The third graph that is indicative of the quality of convergence is the factor of safety versus sliding direction. For this particular problem, we see that the crossover point was at a sliding direction of 313 degrees. If I close this dialog box and select the top of the rotation cube, we realize that north is facing in the negative z-axis direction and the sliding direction, like strike and dip or dip and dip direction, is measured clockwise from north. And so, if we look at the sliding mass right here, north is pointing upwards on the screen, and so to the right is 90 degrees, straight downwards is 180, 
270 to the west, and 310 would be somewhere in this direction, which again, given the geometry, makes really good physical sense. Also, we can graph all the other parameters that are available to us in 2D. So for example, I could add a graph, rename it, effective normal stress, and then from the dropdown, we would select base stresses, effective normal stresses. Notice that this graph is not continuous. Each line represents the columns in the x direction at a constant z. We can conversely plot this versus z. And now, for each x coordinate, we're plotting the column data in the z direction. Once we're done reviewing graphs, we can now go and experiment with the opacity of the geometry to review the slip surface shape. Over in the Geometry Explorer, I'm going to select all the solids and change the opacity to zero. Once I click out into the drawing space, we can now see the three-dimensional sliding mass floating in space. The contours that are painted at the top of each column are also painted on the bottom of each column. If I choose another slip surface, then we see not only the factor of safety of this slip surface, but again, the shape. Okay, the next thing to note is we can select View Result Information, zoom in, and select any individual column, just like we do in 2D, to review all the different data. Right at the top, you'll notice that the sliding direction is presented, and this data is also presented over in the slip surface docking window and around the fifth column. The x, y, and z coordinate for the center of rotation are also presented. Closing this dialog box, we can also click on View Report and View Sliding Mass Information. As the final part of the demo, I will turn on the slip surface color map. Just like in 2D, the slip surface color map allows us to understand the extents of the slip surface search and also get a handle on the different modes of failure. And then selecting show all. Thanks for watching.